Today we're talking about flying monkeys in a smear campaign. But before we can really dig into it, we must first look at exactly how and where a narcissist may smear your name. There are a few ways. So the first way is with friends. If you've ever been sitting at a table with a narcissist who rolls their eyes when they hear you speak, you know that this is one of their smear campaign tactics. They do this to discredit you in front of others. They may also talk behind your back and say awful things about you, including telling people that you've been saying bad things about them. And if they believe the narcissist, these people will quickly become flying monkeys and willingly participate in your takedown. After all, they believe that you are going against them, so they're gonna feel justified. The second way that a narcissist can engage in a smear campaign against you is with your family. And they may use the same tactics that we just talked about, you know, the ones that they use with friends, but they're also more likely to imply that there's something wrong with you. When they're dealing with your family, they're likely to imply that you've changed and everyone needs to rally to make sure that you aren't making decisions for yourself. And of course, if your family believes that you need help, they're probably gonna wanna step in to help you. And so they may become flying monkeys without even realizing that that's what they're doing. So another group that a narcissist can use to smear your name are coworkers or your boss even. When you work with a narcissist, smear campaigns are a given. And you may have even been guilty of siding with a narcissist and becoming a flying monkey against someone else. Why would you do this? Well, because when you have to work with somebody every day, you realize pretty quickly that it's easier to be on their side than to be against them. Yes, it's a selfish thing to do, but I do know plenty of people who've been guilty of it. And another group that narcissists can use against you are people who are in your life but don't really know a lot about you. So this happens a lot with neighbors and it can even happen in a court case. Again, the narcissist may use any of the tactics we've discussed already, but the narcissist is much more likely to rely on reactive abuse here. So here, they'll be sure to trigger you in front of an audience or a camera, and they'll have your response on record. Of course, no one sees what's going on behind the scenes. They only see you respond in anger. When this happens, people will willingly become flying monkeys because they believe the narcissist is a victim and you are abusive. And so they're stepping in to help this poor narcissist who's really the one pulling the strings all along. So you become the enemy and in their eyes, they're on the right side of history. So why do narcissists launch smear campaigns? Seems like a lot of work, doesn't it? Narcissists launch smear campaigns for the purpose of discrediting you, controlling you, or sometimes they do it just to make themselves feel better. It all goes back to that bully on the playground who makes other people feel bad about themselves because doing that makes the bully feel better. A sense of power and control over people is much better than feeling all those bad feelings that might be deep down buried within. And a narcissist is especially likely to launch a smear campaign when you have something that you could use against them. For example, if you're threatening to tell everyone how abusive the narcissist was, or if you have some dirt on them that they don't want getting out, they run an offensive campaign to make everyone think you're crazy or jealous or spiteful. And so when you finally do tell your side of the story, no one believes you. This is exactly how flying monkeys work against you. And yes, just like the narcissist, the flying monkeys usually think they're justified in their behavior. They may think they're protecting their own image if they think you've been saying bad things about them behind their back. They may think they're protecting the narcissist who has painted his or herself as the victim. Or they may think they're actually helping you by helping the narcissist take away your independence. And this happens when the narcissist can convince others that you weren't capable of making your own decisions. The only time a flying monkey doesn't feel justified is when they're simply going along with the plan to keep themselves out of the spotlight. Usually there's quite a bit of guilt that goes along with this one. So how do you handle the narcissist's flying monkeys? Number one, understand what you're dealing with. If it is indeed a smear campaign, it's probably going to be very predictable. 
You may encounter some surprises, like when someone participates who you thought you could trust, but this could be a painful yet important lesson in who your true friends really are. Do not take this lightly and do not trust anyone who seems to be playing both sides. It's better to be safe because the risk is greater than just letting the narcissist hurt you. Even though that's a big risk, in this case, you also risk opening yourself up to potential betrayal from the person who seems to be playing both sides. So if there's someone who appears to be neutral, staying friends with you and the narcissist who is smearing your name, this is somebody that you're gonna to want to avoid. And I have to say there is rarely any reason to open yourself up to this level of betrayal and hurt. Just play it safe and avoid anyone who keeps in contact with the narcissist. The second way you can handle the narcissist's flying monkeys is to stay calm and avoid reacting emotionally. Treat these people in the same way you treat the narcissist. So if you're gray rocking the narcissist, gray rock the flying monkeys too. Or if you can go no contact, even better. But if you have to have them around to some capacity, definitely keep them at a distance. If physical distance isn't possible, consider it emotional distance. Put yourself in a bubble where they can't reach you. You're not going to share anything emotional and you're not going to show any signs of emotion that they can feed off of. Because make no mistake about it, whether these people are narcissists themselves, which is possible or not, they're certainly playing the role. And if they think that they have a reason to dislike you, they might even get pleasure out of seeing you hurt. The third way to handle flying monkeys is to use facts and evidence. Silence is usually best when you're dealing with a smear campaign. But sometimes silence isn't an option, and sometimes you really just don't want to be silent. You feel like you need to say something to stand up for yourself. But if you've ever dealt with a smear campaign, you know that the more you try to defend yourself, the more effort and energy you put towards that, the guiltier you look. So instead, just state the facts and move along. Just know that it's probably not gonna have the same impact you're after. And once you're done, just walk away, regardless of what happens. Let the chips land where they will. So the fourth way to handle flying monkeys is to pretend they don't matter to you. Much like when you're dealing with a narcissist, flying monkeys will get bored quickly if they aren't getting a reaction out of you. So do what you can to enjoy your life and find happiness despite their attempts to destroy you. Nothing will make the entire group angrier than seeing you succeed despite their best attempts to take you down. Regardless of what's going on around you, live your life with integrity and the truth will eventually come out. Reputation isn't about creating an image that you want other people to see. It's about living in a way where you can be proud of yourself. And as long as you're doing that, it doesn't matter what other people think or say. And the last tip I have for you in dealing with the narcissist's flying monkeys is to understand that you have options. Walking away and ignoring them is one option, but it's not one that everyone can manage. Another option is to take legal action. If you feel like things have escalated to that point, document everything that's going on as well as you can and see if you have a case. Smear campaigns feel completely unfair and they can make you feel isolated and powerless. But slander and defamation aren't okay. And you might even have a case if you can prove four things. Number one, the person made a false statement that they said was fact. Number two, they published or communicated that statement to a third party. Number three, their behavior was negligent or downright malicious. And number four, their behavior had a direct negative impact on your emotional health, reputation, or livelihood. Now, laws are different everywhere, so if you feel like this is something that you want to pursue, definitely talk to a lawyer to see if you might have a case. Remember that court battles are really expensive, so the payout of taking one on should always be greater than the cost. So, for example, suing someone just for the sole purpose of getting even or getting revenge probably isn't the best use of your time and resources. So I hope you found all this information helpful. And from here, you might be wondering what's next? What happens to the flying monkeys? Well, 
If you want an answer to that question, watch this video right here where I talk about exactly what happens to the flying monkeys after the narcissist is done with them. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. These things help the video reach more people and that in turn helps the channel to grow. And I hope to see you next time.